Thank you for coming to the Amber Shows. Listen, I also have a radio podcast type show I'm doing, which is not video. It's only audio. So if I happen to send you the link, it's only audio. Don't look for a picture. It's like listening to the radio. Okay? All right. So now to start off, Wendy Williams is finally, her business is finally out. She tells everybody else's business, and now her business has surfaced. Wendy Williams, as I've explained before, and you may have already heard, her husband, Kevin Hunter, was cheating. They've been married 20, almost 22 years. Uh, he's had a mistress for about 10 years, allegedly. Uh, he allegedly moved the mistress in the same neighborhood that they live in, and they allegedly just had a baby about two weeks ago. So, got hair. So, they had a baby about two weeks ago, the little girl. So I don't know, they, him and Wendy share a uh, son together. But anyway, she, you know, she'll tell you, it was even in her book, it's well known, that one time she was a uh, crackhead or she was freebasing, uh, she was out of control, she got that in control. And now uh, with this devastating news about her husband, uh, she relapsed, uh, she was in a, a facility, a rehab facility recently. Uh, her husband is the executive producer of her show. He was supposedly in the office at the show when she had the divorce papers served to him in a box that looked like a present. It said he got very, very mad. He huffed and puffed out of the uh, uh, studio. Uh, studio. And uh, so now you can be an executive producer and not be at the office. So that'll be good. She doesn't have to see him anymore. And I'm sure when they sit down with the divorce attorney, all those things will be worked out. Wendy's net worth is $60 million. Of course, they have no prenup because, prenup because when they got married, there was no large amount of money uh, on the table at the time. So uh, good luck to Wendy Williams. Maybe your show will be better and you'll be kinder to people. You can be an entertainment host without uh, being rude and judgmental. Does anybody watch Real Housewives of Atlanta? Okay, now... For the first couple seasons, when it first came on, I loved Nene. Then there were some seasons when I didn't like Nene. Then it came back, I liked her. This season, I thought I could not stand her. I was thinking, what is wrong with her? Everything has to be about her. She's the worst friend. You know, everybody has to cater to her. She gives nothing in return. And to me, friendship, real friendship, is a responsibility, not an opportunity. And you are supposed to, you know, give, but you want to receive back. I want you to know that I like you, and I want to know that you like me or love me. It's the same thing. But Nene, this season, everything was about her. Her husband, Greg, got cancer. Uh, she wanted to get a divorce even while he had can has cancer because she felt like, you know, he was mean to her while, you know, because he's ill. He's never had cancer before, so you don't know how it's going to affect you. Uh, with her friends, she all felt like she wasn't happy for any of her friends. Uh, Portia was having a baby, she wasn't happy. Even Marcel is on there, who she brought in as a friend, and then she wasn't happy with even Marcel. She didn't like her friend Tanya. Um, she's just a big mess. The only person who stuck by her is Marlo, but Marlo needs a peach. So I can understand Marlo's where Marlo's coming from. But now when I look at it again, Nene's brilliant. I mean, this is how she stays relevant. We're talking about why she's so mean when really that's part of the show. We, we start thinking that reality TV is real and it's not. It's about entertainment and we want to see people fighting, mad, jealous, petty. These are the things you want to see on the reality shows, obviously, because they're successful. And she did it again. This season, she made it seem like it was all about her. She made it seem like everybody, Cynthia and all who was supposed to be her friends, aren't really her friends and she'll never be their friends again. And this is good because we're gonna wait for next season to see what happens with Nene and the rest of the cast. Brilliant, Nene. Good job. Jussie Smollett, you know how I feel about him. Finally, something, he's gonna get something, you know, he's gonna have to, uh, you know, get responsible. He has to be responsible for what he did. Okay, so Jussie Smollett is being sued by the city of Chicago, seemingly, we thought that he skated after he allegedly, uh, you know, uh, uh, orchestrated uh, this uh, t uh, racial attack that supposedly happened to him, that allegedly attack happened to him. But now, hmm, 
The city of Chicago wants its money back. Okay, so they're suing to cover the cost for the investigation, the, inter the attorney fees, etc. Uh, it could amount to almost half a million dollars. So if Jesse goes to court, we can finally hear the story. But I want to hear the African boy's story. I want to know how Jesse told him to hit him and put the noose around his neck. That's what I want to hear. Okay? So stay tuned for that. You know I'm going to give you that information. Could you survive prison? I could not survive without, la I want my lash uh, salon. I, I want a hair salon. I need a boutique for clothes. Um, I need certain foods I enjoy. And I need some champagne and some tequila. Okay? So I couldn't survive prison, not one bit, unless it turned into a resort like that. Uh, the reason I'm asking you is because if you're on Instagram, check out, his, his name is Ha Ha Davis, okay? And he's on Instagram, he's hilarious. He did a funny skit about being arrested today and it was really funny. All right, Hollywood's youngest executive in Hollywood history is 14-year-old Marseille Martin. Okay, so now Marseille Martin, she played the little girl on Black-ish, and now she is the, large, the first Hollywood, execu Hollywood executive producer um, for the movie Little. If you haven't seen it yet, I heard it's really good. It just started this weekend. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing it's very, gonna be very successful right now from the uh, box office. Uh, so, speaking on these millenniums, uh, she, she actually pitched this movie, Little, to Hollywood executives when she was 10 years old. And she's 14 and the movie is out. These new millenniums do and move right now. They don't, when they, as soon as they think about it, they do it. They dream about it, they do it. They don't wait or procrastinate. They have all the tools now in this century to do whatever you want to do. You don't have to try and find an encyclopedia. You don't have to talk to somebody who else has done it necessarily. You don't have to just draw, write it down and then think that it'll happen later on. You can do anything you want to do at any age. Right now, you can do it. Your kids need to be taught as much as they can. If you can sit a child in a stroller and give that child your phone so they can be quiet or whatever or, be, or while you're shopping, and they could pull up things on your phone, games, Baby Shark and all that. Give your, your kids real information. By the time they get in preschool, they are ahead of themselves. A preschooler should be going into school with, with second, third grade um, knowledge, okay? So these kids are doing it and she's doing it and so you can do it as well. Now, Coachella, what is Coachella? Okay, the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival is an annual music and art festival that's held at the Empire Polo Club in Indies, California. It's Coachella Valley in the Colorado Desert, and it goes from April 12th to April 21st. The tickets range from $429 for general admission and $1,000 for VIP passes. Now, Kanye West, uh, he's doing the Coachella Sunday services, and it's going to be live streamed on YouTube this coming Sunday. Um, the, uh, the, you, the, on the Coachella YouTube channel, okay? He was originally to headline uh, Coachella, but the stages, they couldn't get stages to fit uh, the, the production that he needed, so he had to drop out. So if you want to see uh, Kanye West's brilliant uh, Sunday service, uh, tune in this Sunday. Go to the Coachella YouTube channel. I love Bruno Mars. I love Cardi B. They said Cardi B is doing a great job in Coachella as well. Um, they have a record together, Bruno Mars and Cardi B. It's called Please Me. I don't know if you've ever heard it. I love how they took like 80s, 90s uh, vibe, R&B feel, feel along with this century's uh, rap and put it together. I love the record. Listen to it. Please me. You can pull it up on YouTube or on Instagram or you can download it on your iTunes. Okay. The world's most dangerous bird just killed his fellow owner 
in Gainesville, Florida. It's called the cassowary, C-A-S-S-O-W-A-R-Y bird. Uh, the man uh, was feeding him. He ended up falling some type of way wherever he had the bird caged. And uh, he felt where the bird was in, you know, he fell in the same cage as where he had the bird. And he was stomped to death. He was 76 years old. Um, you know what the, an, an invisible killer is? Our pollution. We're breathing in, taking in on our nose, our mouths, all of our open orifices. The largest organ we have is our skin and it's all being taken into our body, which is causing all types of diseases that we have to this day, including lots of respiratory diseases, lots of pneumonia has popped up, things like that. Um, now, I think it's very important that you take short breaks to reinforce your memory uh, it, whenever you're trying to learn something new or relearn something. So you t don't, oh, don't burn your brain out. Take a break, study, read it, take it in, and then don't just overdo it. Stop for a while and don't burn yourself out. Um, that's the same thing with working out, exact same thing. Don't burn yourself out. Do a little bit at a time, take your time. Um, there's a wasp uh, warning that's gonna be out for, that's coming up now for the summertime. Uh, and this wasp is very aggressive insect, insect that has been discovered. Um, he's very aggressive. Uh, they feed on human food and pet food. Um, they have a powerful sting and, and they can devastate crops. So look out when you see a wasp, get, get it away from you and run as fast as possible. Ray J's dog is still missing. It's been a while. Uh, he said that on camera from his home, they saw that a white guy, a uh, young white guy uh, in a Dodge white truck, uh, picked up his dog in the yard and took off. Uh, they loved the dog, him and his family. Uh, you know, if you have a pet, you know what it is. That's just like your family, your pet. Uh, and he's offering a $20,000 reward. And he's asking to please return his dog. Please return his dog. If, if, if There's no reason for you to take it, because even if you wanted it, nobody was going to give you. If somebody said they wanted a little white Maltese, and you happen to see that one, and you have able to get it, whoever you took it to, they're not giving you 20000 so you need to get it back from whoever you took it to, or if you just took it for yourself, and get that 20000 and move on. Okay, now, let us in it, we rise and we win. Black people, whatever we decide to put our heads to, we always make it happen and we come on top. Look at um, Serena Williams. Look at Tiger Woods. He just won the Masters since 2005. He just won the Masters. He's back. Tiger is back. Can you imagine? He won the Masters just recently. So um, it's just a fabulous thing that he won the Masters. Now, um, look at LeBron James. I mean, Michael Jordan. I mean, when we get in it, Muhammad Ali. I mean, I could go on and on. We get in it. That's why they didn't want us anything, because they knew that if we got in it, we would win. Look at all the, in the Olympics. Who's beating, who's beating everybody running? Africans? Anything we get in, we make it happen. We win, we rise. Listen, I'm also doing an audio show. Uh, in case you don't know, it's an audio podcast. I'll send you the link, those that I know, uh, phone numbers and texts and Instagrams and my Twitter followers. Um, I, I'll send you the link when I say it's in the Amber Show's audio show. That means there is no video. There, it's only audio. Okay, so you can listen to it. For this show, I'd like to tell you thank you for coming to the Amber Shows. Please hit the like button, which is a thumbs up. Please share my video and also please comment. I appreciate you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming to the Amber Shows.